This is Intel's Ponte Vecchio High Performance Computing GPU. It uses EMIP and Forest packaging technologies to combine a mind-blowing 47 active chiplets into a single GPU. This is AMD's MI300X. It also uses advanced packaging technology to 3D stack 8 5 nanometer GPU chiplets onto 4 6 nanometer base chiplets. And it's just one of many versions of the MI300 family. AMD can combine GPU and CPU chiplets as needed, creating powerful HPC and AI APUs or even a CPU-only configuration. In comparison, NVIDIA's GH100 Hopper GPU almost looks boring. It's a single monolithic 814 square millimeter die with six small HPI memory chips next to it. And while NVIDIA's Grace Hopper Super chip does seem more exciting, a closer look quickly reveals that it's just a CPU and a GPU on the same PCB, not an actual chiplet architecture. MI300 just recently started shipping to customers and Ponte Vecchio had a rough launch. Right now, Hopper is still king of the hill. But comparing these three GPUs side by side clearly shows that while Intel and AMD have fully embraced the chiplet-based future, Nvidia seems stuck with large monolithic chips. But has Nvidia really missed such a crucial technology? And if not, when can we expect Nvidia to finally start using chiplets? Nvidia is no stranger when it comes to chiplet research. Over the past years, Nvidia has continuously worked on their RC test chip line focused on deep learning inference. In 2019, RC18 combined 36 tiny, scalable neural network accelerators produced in TSMC's 60 nanometer node onto a single MCM packet. Not only did this chiplet-based design achieve great efficiency, it also took less than six months from finalizing the specs to achieving tape out, which is insanely fast and even more impressive if you consider the small team that worked on this proof of concept. Well, before that, in 2017, NVIDIA researchers published a paper on the feasibility of multi-chip modules or MCM GPUs. This paper is interesting because it analyzed the potential performance benefits of a chiplet architecture versus a monolithic design. NVIDIA researchers proposed to split the GPU into smaller GPU modules, so-called GPMs. Up to four of these GPMs could then be combined into a single MCM. A big focus of the research was how to minimize the required chiplet to chiplet communication with smart memory and scheduling systems and what kind of package level integration is actually needed in terms of bandwidth and energy use. The conclusion is eye-opening. The proposed MCM GPU design was 45.5% faster than the largest possible monolithic GPU. A more recent NVIDIA paper from 2021 expands on the idea of chiplet-based GPUs but with a twist. Instead of only using the benefits of chiplets as a means to improve yields and outperform a monolithic chip, NVIDIA adds the idea of so-called domain-specialized GPUs. The idea is that current supercomputer GPUs are used for vastly different tasks. HPC uses high-precision FP32 and FP64, which is very compute-heavy but less memory-aligned. AI and machine learning, on the other hand, use low-precision FP16, Bfloat16, Int8 and even Int4, which love a lot of cache and needs a huge amount of VRAM to fit large AI models. The idea is to create specialized chiplets, for example a HPC chiplet with lots of FP64 performance and less focused on cache and VRAM, while a AI chiplet would be combined with a large cache system and lots of VRAM. And I'm just scratching the surface here. Nvidia's research goes so much deeper. The point I'm trying to make is that Nvidia didn't miss chiplets. They have spent a lot of time researching different chiplet designs in the past. The question is, if NVIDIA is doing all of this research, why haven't they built a chiplet GPU yet? When we talk about NVIDIA GPUs, it's important to differentiate between the consumer-focused gaming and HPC and AI GPUs. Not only are they based on different architectures, they also follow a very different design philosophy. The last couple of consumer generations, from Maxwell to Ada Lovelace, show that while there is some variety in die size, Nvidia seems to consider 600 square millimeters to be the upper limit for its high-end gaming chips. Pascal was smaller because it achieved a lot of its performance uplift based on clock speed, and Turing was larger because TSMC's 12 nanometer node was merely a refined 60 nanometer without tangible transistor density gains. The HPC in AI lineup, on the other hand, is based on much larger chips. Ever since the introduction of Volta, Nvidia's first AI-focused architecture, Nvidia's enterprise GPUs consistently max out at around 800 square millimeters. And while a 33% die size increase over the consumer chips might not seem like much, it's important to understand that Nvidia is hitting the EUV reticle limit, 
which is 858 square millimeters. NVIDIA's consumer GPUs are around 600 square millimeters because that's what NVIDIA is targeting. The HPC and AI GPUs are around 800 square millimeters because that's the limit of current chip manufacturing. If NVIDIA could, they would certainly build even larger chips. So why hasn't NVIDIA released a chiplet GPU yet? For gaming, it's easy to explain. It's a lot harder to multi-thread gaming workloads, since they heavily depend on low latency. We can observe something similar in CPUs, where multi-thread workloads easily scale across different chiplets. But games need low latency and thus love monolithic chips and lots of cash. It's the very reason AMD's first gaming chiplet GPUs, Navi 31 and 32, still use a single compute die and only move the memory interface and Infinity cache onto individual chiplets. Nvidia isn't really behind in this area, at least not yet. Possible yield disadvantages are compensated by binning, and due to Nvidia's market dominance, they can dictate pricing and retain high margins, even with large monolithic designs. HPC and AI GPUs, on the other hand, have no trouble splitting their workloads across multiple chiplets. AI servers already use thousands of GPUs connected via high-speed networks, which are much slower than chip-to-chip -chip communication. MD's MI300 uses multiple GPU chiplets on a single package. I think the reason NVIDIA hasn't released a chiplet-based HPC and AI GPU yet, similar to MI300, is that so far NVIDIA didn't have any real competition in AI. Yes, MI200 250X was a decent product, but not only did it not keep up with NVIDIA hardware-wise, if you go back just half a year, AMD's entire software stack was woefully underprepared. NVIDIA's CUDA on the other hand almost had a monopoly. Why switch to a complex new chiplet architecture if you can just keep building 800 square millimeter monolithic chips and sell them for a huge amount of money because there isn't any real competition? NVIDIA just hasn't felt the pressure yet. In a nutshell, there are no chiplet-based gaming GPUs from NVIDIA because it's very difficult to implement and even chiplet crazy AMD just made a tiny first step. And there are no chiplet-based HPC and AI GPUs because up until now, Nvidia didn't have any actual competition. But all of this is changing. There are three different dimensions that I think force the implementation of a chiplet design for next generation GPUs. The first dimension is what I call the process node dimension. If you have watched my channel before, you probably know that new process nodes achieve less scaling. Basically, shrinking transistors gets harder and harder over time. Current Nvidia GPUs, both Ada Lovelace and Hopper, are produced in TSMC's 4N node, a 5 nanometer class process. TSMC's next gen 3 nanometer process node, or to be more precise, N3E, has a transistor scaling of only around 1.6x. And while it's not that much worse compared to previous full node jumps, the real problem is analog and SRAM scaling. Analog interfaces only scale by a factor of about 1.1x, and SRAM cells, for the first time ever, have literally zero density improvement over a 5 nanometer class process node. As such, it becomes increasingly more difficult to achieve the expected generational and performance improvements while sticking to NVIDIA's 600 and 800 square millimeter targets for consumer and enterprise GPUs. The reduction in transistor scaling is made even worse by the fact that especially the areas with the worst scaling, analog and SRAM, are becoming more important for future architectures. Over the last generation, L1, L2 and last level cache sizes have drastically increased. AMD introduced the huge Infinity cache with RDNA 2, Ada Lovelace increased the L2 cache by a factor of 12x over Ampere, and Hopper not only has a large L2 cache, but also contains a lot of L1 cache. Future architectures will only build on that trend. If your next-gen GPU increases the amount of on-die cache, but cache literally doesn't scale anymore, you have a die size problem. Analog I.O. and interconnects also increase in importance, another transistor type with very low to no area scaling. The successor to Hopper will most likely have more and higher bandwidth and V-links to facilitate even larger AI networks. But if these interfaces barely shrink in size with the new process node, Nvidia has a problem, especially since it can't just make larger chips, as Hopper is already as large as currently possible. The process node dimension clearly has a bigger impact on Nvidia's next-gen HPC and AI GPUs than on their next-gen gaming chips. But at their core, both architectures face the same problem. You want more cache, but cache doesn't scale, and you want more and faster interconnects, but they also scale very poorly. Nvidia needs to find a solution for this problem, and the most obvious one is chiplets. The second part of the process node dimension kind of builds on the first one, as it's also process node related, but it's not about N3E. I call this the high numerical aperture wall. Current process nodes like advanced 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer, and the next gen 3 nanometer process nodes are manufactured using EUV, 
The theoretical maximum reticle size, basically how large of a chip you can produce, is 26 mm by 33 mm or 585 mm squared. In reality, it's a bit below that, like you can see with Nvidia's TPUs, maxing out at slightly above 800 mm squared. But sometimes, after 3 nanometer, a new generation of machines will be needed to build the next generation increasingly smaller transistors, so called high NA EUV. ASML is already hard at work and will ship first units in the near future. And while high NA EUV does allow for smaller transistor size, it comes with a huge drawback. The maximum reticle size is cut in half. Instead of 858 square millimeters, high NA only allows for a maximum die size of 429 square millimeters, which in reality probably will be a little bit above 400 square millimeters. We don't know when exactly high NA will be introduced in mass production, probably sometimes after 2025, but it is coming. And if you haven't switched to a chiplet architecture by then, you will be in trouble. Nvidia can continue producing 800 square millimeter monolithic chips until they are forced to reduce that to 400 square millimeter without having a working chiplet design in place. It's a hard cutoff for large monolithic designs. The next dimension is efficiency. When it comes to hyperscalers and supercomputers, networking consumes a large amount of energy. It often accounts for over 20% of the total power consumption. Connecting thousands of GPUs into one single cluster is energy intensive, especially since transporting data over longer distances also increases the energy demand. A chiplet architecture allows you to design chips that go beyond what a traditional monolithic design could achieve. And as a result, you can pack more performance onto a single card, which in turn means you need to pack less individual cards into a server to achieve the same performance, creating huge power savings because you need less networking. And networking isn't the only benefit. Space also plays an important part. Many servers today are space limited. Not everyone can build a huge server farm in the middle of nowhere. Customers have existing infrastructure and real estate can be a huge cost factor. A more performance dense chiplet design, which needs less GPUs and thus less servers, can be a huge boon to total cost of ownership calculations. And last but certainly not least, we have the growing competition. As mentioned before, even today, Nvidia is pretty much without competition, especially when it comes to AI workloads. But this reality is quickly changing. AMD's Rockham software stack has drastically improved over time and frameworks like Meta's PyTorch and OpenAI's Brighton are taking over. The days of complete CUDA domination are numbered. At the same time, Intel and AMD are scaling up their GPU game with highly complex chiplet architectures like Ponte Vecchio and MI300. Especially MI300X will most likely be very competitive with Nvidia's current hopper generation. And with the amount of money spent on AI hardware, you can be sure that AMD is working overtime to ensure MI400 will be even stronger. And with all the benefits we've discussed before, eventually chiplet architectures will outscale simple monolithic designs. Nvidia simply can't afford to not invest into chiplets. Otherwise, they will not only lose the chiplet race, but they will also lose the performance crown. When it comes to Nvidia and chiplets, the question isn't if, but when. And to be frank, if we consider gaming GPUs, it might take another generation or even two. Currently, Nvidia is in a very comfortable spot and until the latency problem for gaming isn't fully solved, monolithic chips can still compete well. HPC and AI, on the other hand, is a completely different ballpark. I'm convinced Nvidia's next generation, the successor to Hopper, has to be chiplet based. The benefits are just too big to ignore. And at the same time, the risks of not going chiplet are massive. Just imagine if AMD goes all out with MI400, creating a huge AI accelerator. A single monolithic chip couldn't compete. There's no way Nvidia leaves their unquestioned AI leadership up to chance. I know my level of certainty is a bit daring, but I would be more than surprised if Hopper Next is still monolithic. Nvidia has to embrace the future or the future will be without Nvidia. And I have no doubt that Nvidia will enter the chiplet area with a bang. Since this was a very opinion based video on a forward looking topic, I want to know what you think. Do you agree with my assumption that Nvidia's next gen AI GPUs will be chiplet based or not? And if not, what's your reasoning? Do you have good counterpoints to some of my arguments? And what about gaming GPUs? Leave a comment down below. I'm looking forward to what you have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.